if you do not want to watch this full video since it ended up being longer than I intended, or you want some additional tips and things like that that weren't mentioned in this video, please scroll down to my description. I have a list of different things I can help you, like tips that I advise for if you're getting tattoos and stuff. Um, I also summarize the different pain of each session I went to, how much the tattoos cost total, um, and I list the different things for the aftercare. So there's some stuff down in the description box if you need any more help. Since I accidentally deleted some of the videos I was going to be using for this tattoo vlog, there are going to be some random snippets that are of me in a different outfit, different makeup on, stuff like that, talking about things that are not going to be completely smooth or as fluid. <laughs> so apologies for that in advance. Okay, everyone, welcome to my tattoo vlog. This is where I talk about all the different tattoos I have. Uh, I guess I can talk a little bit about some future ones I have ideas for, which is kind of a lot. <laughs> um, and I'm just going to be talking about the different experiences I've had. I'll have pictures on the sides of like each ones that I have and like some of them I have like the process, like the healing process and the inking process pictured. So you'll be able to see a little bit of a step-by-step -step thing. Um, two of them took multiple sessions to do. So I have like before and afters as well. So for my very first tattoo, I got this one in October, 2011, soon after I graduated high school. I had originally wanted to get one for my 18th birthday, which was on that year as well in April. But for some reason, it didn't work out, so I ended up going with Zombie. Um, Zombie and I got our first and second tattoos together. Well, she got her third done with me as I was getting my second. So we went to uh, a place out of the city at a mall. So that was kind of our bad because, <laughs> you know, we, we didn't know any better. But... We went to the one in the mall, and it was, it was like, legit, but some of the ink was kind of wonky with it. My first tattoo was a tribal dragon. Um, I found the picture online, and it was really neat. Someone had it tattooed on their arm, and I thought that would be a really good first tattoo to get, especially since I didn't want it really filled all the way in. I just wanted the outline of the dragon. So I got it on my left shoulder in this area, face forward, so that way I could easily deal with any pain there. I could just wear, you know, shoulder, uh, shoulderless tops and stuff like that and be able to easily reach it to protect it. When I got this first tattoo, uh, the lady put on some documentaries for us to watch. Um, Zombie went first and she got one on her side, like, well, kind of near her hip, um, facing forward. It was really cute. Um, there's going to be a picture of it soon because we took some selfies together. Um, and so I watched a dinosaur documentary. Um, it's kind of hurt. Um, if you see here, like it hurt going closer to my collarbone. So like in these areas, it hurt really bad. The rest of it I barely felt, but the needle was really annoying because it vibrated a lot, obviously, and it was like right against my ear almost. So it just felt like the lady was drawing on me with a vibrating pen and it was just like repeatedly like hitting me in the face and the ear. So that was kind of annoying. Um, the healing process was actually pretty good for this tattoo because it's only like some lines. <laughs> um, it wasn't anything super detailed. There wasn't any shading or anything like that in it. And I'm not trying to downplay this person's effort. Like that's not what I mean. But what I mean is that there was no shading. There's no like special colors or anything like that. So the healing process was really simple for this one. Zombie and I drove about an hour, hour and a half to the place that we got our tattoos done at, and I was a driver. So my seatbelt went right across, and we ended up going to lunch afterwards. And so I had to get um, some, like, saran wrap kind of over it, and I started to bleed. And there was, like, ink and blood mixing together and turning brown underneath. 
And the lady told us to just wait till we got home to take off that saran wrap. So we had it on during lunch. Um, during the tattoo process, um, when I was watching Zombie Go First, I felt like I was going to throw up because this was like the first time I've ever done this, you know. I've never seen someone get it done live before in front of me. So needless to say, I was a bit freaked out. You know, it's understandable. But after I lay down and she started working on me, it just, the pain, it hurts. Like, I'm not going to lie and say it doesn't hurt. It hurts. But it's a tolerable pain and you just kind of get over it because you're like, this is going to be something permanent on my body. It's something that I'm paying for. I'm willingly letting this person hurt me for this piece of art. And once this pain's over in the hour it took to get it done and then the two weeks for the aftercare it's going to be fine. Like, I'm not going to feel any pain there anymore, and I'm going to have something that stays with me forever. With tattoos, there is a process of taking care of them after you've gotten them done to help them heal. Basically, the aftercare steps. Um, part of the aftercare steps is that you do lotion, but you don't do a lot. Um, so, for this tattoo, the lady recommended doing lotion twice a day and washing it twice a day. As I got future tattoos, they told me not to lotion it that much. So that was another thing, like another reason why I would not go back to the first place that I went to. I was supposed to have direct running water on it, like a shower, like constantly. So what I did was I put like a washcloth over my shoulder and like I let some water run on it and then I would cover it with the, the washcloth. And go about my business, or I would just try to keep my arm out of the direct water. Just knocked over my water bottle. Um, so that happened for two weeks, basically. Every day in the morning, I would wake up, I'd go wash the tattoo, put lotion on it, and then right before bed, I would wash it and lotion it. So that would happen for two weeks until the peeling stopped, the pain had gone away, and that was it. For my second tattoo, I got this one done August 2015. I went in August and I also went in September because I had to go um, in two different sessions. I went to a tattoo parlor in the same town that I got my first tattoo in. So we drove, you know, an hour and a half to two hours to get there. Now, this guy was really nice. I really liked my tattoo artist who did this. Now, the piece that I got was also something I found online, and I got permission from the artist who did it. It's called Moth Royalty, and it's of this really pretty moth fairy queen. I got this one done on my right thigh. I've always really wanted a thigh tattoo, so as soon as I saw this piece on Tumblr and I got the artist's permission to get it done, I was like, hell yeah, I want to get this one done, I want to get my thigh. Um, so I went there and I had like my little picture printed out and the guy, he blew it up to a bigger size and he told me he was going to redesign some of it to make it an original piece, but also to make it easier to transfer to my skin. Because it's kind of like how animated tattoos, like Sailor Moon tattoos, are really hard to recreate on skin. It's because some of those, like, drawings don't translate well on skin and with ink. Um, so he changed a little bit up, which, I mean, I was completely fine with the changes. I told him that he can do what he wanted to do. I trusted his instincts and his experience and knowledge of being a tattoo artist. Um, so what we did first was we did the outline so that he knew what the drawing was going to look like and he also added a bit of detail um, to the arms. Now this process it hurt really bad because I have like really thick thighs. So like the flabbier and the bonier areas of your body are going to hurt but it wasn't, like I said, it was tolerable. It wasn't bad. And after he finished the outline and stuff like that, I was pretty much ready to just get it all done in one session. I was like, if you have time and want to just go ahead and do it all in one session. The reason he stopped, though, was because my skin was kind of appearing irritated. When I first got it done, 
it didn't look like it was welting or swelling or anything like that, which he later told me it wasn't, but it started to look a little irritated. There was a little bit of blood and he didn't want to continue and like risk it messing up. So I was fine with that. I was like, you know, it's okay. So after I got mine done, uh, zombie went and got her third done, which was a really pretty, um, dandelion and some of the, some butterflies were coming off of it. Like it's very pretty and it's on like the back of her shoulder. Um, and her second tattoo was, um, a tribute to her mother on her foot, which is also really pretty. She got that one done by the same person who did our first tattoos together. So the healing process for that one, I did the same for the first tattoo. I washed it twice a day and I used lotion twice a day. The tattoo was such a pain in the butt in the healing process both times that I got my thigh worked on because I like to wear dresses and I like to wear shorts. And so anytime I walked, not only would my thigh jiggle a little bit, but also the fabric of whatever I was wearing was brushing against it. So that part really sucked. But, um, and also at the time I had my cat Sinatra and he liked to lay on my lap and lay all over me. So that was always fun, him like jumping up on my lap and happening to land on my tattoo. Um, so that one was harder to sleep with as well. The healing process for that one wasn't too bad. It just, the skin shed a little bit, but nothing really bad happened. Like it didn't scab up or anything like that. So I was really thankful for that. So then two weeks went by, no, three weeks, sorry, three weeks went by. And I went back and I got the rest of it finished, which is where he added the shading, he added the smoke, and he added a little bit more details and went over some lines that needed to be redone. Um, and it was the exact same as before. The shading needle is a smaller needle and it hurt so much worse than the, than the first tattoo. Uh, the healing process was about the same though. Like it didn't hurt any worse with it touching anything. It didn't hurt any worse with like the shedding. The shedding of the skin wasn't any worse. Um, it was, overall, it was a really great experience. Um, and it was really cool actually getting it done. Um, but the first, like the first few hours after I got the second session done on the second tattoo, it was so irritated. My skin was so irritated that it was red and the inside of the tattoo looked brown. Like it looked like he went with some brown and did the shading in that color. Which wasn't the case. It was just my skin freaking out. Um, it still did not swell up or welt up or anything like that. So that was good. I also remember for my second tattoo, I'm pretty sure it was the second session. So when all the shading was done, um, I was driver for each and every time I've gotten my tattoos done. Because I've either gone alone or I've gone with my friends. And so for the second session, I was driving and I was using my mother's Suburban. So it had like the AC and everything like that. And when we were driving back home... After I got my second session done, I had the vents for the air conditioning like pointed down at my leg because my leg just felt like it was on fire, like just because of all that needle work. And so I just had this cold air just beating down on it because it hurt so bad. Um, and I was actually going to go back to that tattoo artist um, or possibly someone else at that tattoo shop. But I called three different occasions. I Facebook messaged a couple times over... A long period of time and you know they said that they would get back to me or that they would leave my phone number on a post-it note on the computer and that way like anytime like one of the managers or something came by they would see that they needed to call me and they never did so after a while of trying I was like yeah screw it I'll go somewhere else and that is when I found my current tattoo artist up here um, that way I wouldn't have to keep driving to all these other cities and towns to get tattoos done so I met Brooke and I told her like I really wanted to get something done of my cat Sinatra who I had for 14 years and I loved him so much and I still do and I had a um a print of his paw print and I gave her a photo of him too and I was like I don't know exactly what I want but it you know I threw a bunch of different ideas at her like an outline of a fat cat with the paw print in it or, you know, just a bunch of different ideas. I never once thought about doing a portrait though. So I went and ran some errands and I came back after about like an hour or two 
and Brooke had done a few designs in different price ranges for me. Um, the cheapest one was a really cute cat outline with a space for the paw print. The most expensive one was a portrait of him in the frame, which is what I ended up getting because as soon as I saw that face in that frame, I fell in love. And I was like, I, I need to get this frame, you know? So I got it on my right forearm. This tattoo has been the most challenging in the healing process and the most painful out of my tattoo so far. I went in March of this year, so 2016, to get the tattoo drawn up and the line art. And so I went in and we started doing the line art and my skin was doing okay for a while. And then it started to welt up where my skin was just rising. And after she got to her with the line art, <laughs> Brooke was like, well, I don't want to continue because it's going to screw up the lines and it's going to make things weird. And I also don't want your arm to swell up really bad because your arm can double or triple in size if you just keep going and let the welting keep going. So we did just the line art. Now, that was a really painful spot. Definitely. Like that was probably the worst pain I've ever felt ever, not just from my tattoos, but ever in my life. Um, it is a very sensitive area on my body, but the problem that comes with tattoos is that you do not know what your skin is going to handle, how much ink it's going to handle, if your skin's going to be able to hold color very well, and what's going to be the most sensitive on you and what's going to be more painful. Because there are some people who get ankle and feet tattoos and they don't really even feel it, or like the pain's really tolerable for them. And others, it's like a screaming kind of pain. So it really just depends, and you have to just kind of go in there and be like, I want it here, I want to get it here, and just deal with it, basically. So this tattoo, <laughs> a lot happened with it. So I got the tattoo done on a Tuesday, and the very next day, my cat was really, really ill, and we had been trying to figure out a good time to put him to sleep because he was getting older, you know, he was 15 plus, and he had a lot of health problems, but since he was eating and drinking, going to the bathroom, and he wasn't throwing up a lot, we thought he was going to be fine for a little bit longer. But on that Wednesday, he threw up a lot. And so my mom finally was like, we just have to do it. So Friday, we made the appointment. So it felt really bad that, like, the same week I was getting this tattoo done for him and I was hoping would be done before that point completely, I had to put him to sleep. While she was coloring, the color hurt really bad so it hurt worse than the first session and i just went through saying you know that the first session was the most painful pain i've ever experienced in my life so this one was even worse than that <laughs> so it topped that one after that moment this tattoo just like refused to heal it peeled and then it started to scab over in one area and and it just would not heal. And after about a month, it finally healed. But uh, soon after it healed, uh, I got scratched pretty bad on it from Iceman, who I adopted about a month or so after I put Sancho to sleep because I was really lonely and I needed a presence in my room. And, um, you know, Iceman was really helping me and stuff, but he ended up playfully scratching me heck about on that arm. And so we couldn't tattoo over that because it could have caused an infection. For the third session of Sinatra's tattoo, we went and we got the second half done because the second session, I got half of the coloring done of the frame and of Sinatra's face and eyes and stuff. Um, and we had to stop because it was welting and swelling up pretty bad. Um, so after I dealt with the scabbing, more scratches from Iceman, just my skin not healing from the second session, we went in for the third session and we finished the coloring of everything. But there was still some spaces that needed touching up from my second session, like where my skin was scabbing and scarring. Um, there were a bunch of gaps between the ink so we, she had to go back over those later because just like before this third session my arm started to swell up and welt a little bit 
and it was bleeding a lot. I, I was bleeding so much with this colored session. Um, but the, uh, the skin wasn't swelling up as bad as before because during the session, my tattoo artist kept changing the speed of the needles and stuff. So it kept fluctuating all over the place from like five to seven, you know, in different uh, decimals. So it was really interesting seeing the different needle speeds and how they reacted with my skin and stuff like that. But, um, you know, that one really hurt. Like with this tattoo, it progressively got more and more painful and it kept topping my top pain I've ever felt in my life. So surely this tattoo has won all those awards. <laughs> it's technically won four awards now. So I got the first session done in March. And then sometime in April, May, I got the second session done where half of the tattoo was completed. And then because of the tattoo healing process and money and things coming up, I did not go back in until October, around October, to get the... Um, the third session done to complete the coloring and then I just went um, in November November 15th to get the rest of it like touched up which was a bunch of the black lines around the frame the purple background um, some of Sinatra's features like his whiskers the coloring of his eyes um, and some of the gray in the frame where my tattoo had scarred over and all that crap so it was just this long process and it has nothing to do with my tattoo artist. It has nothing to do with anything that she did or the ink or anything like that. It was just because of this dang arm. <laughs> and funnily enough, I was talking to Rinkel earlier today and she made the joke like, can you feel anything in your arm? Because each time the session got more painful and now I can't feel any pain when I like wash this tattoo. Like there's no burning sensation at all. So when I like smacked my arm here where the tattoo isn't and I felt like a certain amount of pain and then I hit the tattoo and like I didn't feel as much pain there as I did here. <laughs> so it kind of led it, it like fed into the joke a little bit that now I've probably lost feeling in that spot on my arm because of this thing. Um, but even though I went through all this trouble and stuff like that, I might not get another tattoo of my forearm soon, but eventually I will. Like, it will not stop me from getting all the tattoos I want in the locations I want them. Overall, Sinatra's tattoo was a very emotional experience because, you know, when I first got the tattoo, I was thinking my cat was going to live for quite a bit longer, and then the very next day he got super ill, and two days later after he got super ill, I ended up having to put him to sleep, and I had to deal with the roller coaster emotions I was feeling after losing my cat of 14 years and not having his tattoo finished. Um, and then, you know, I had to go back in and I couldn't even finish all of the color in one session. I had a half finished piece because my arm just was freaking out. And then as I was moving on and getting over losing him with ice and stuff and starting to n normalize myself and not expect to come home to Sinatra and expect to have him cuddling with me and not like, you know, saying, oh, I'm going to scoop Sinatra's litter box, but actually saying Iceman's litter box. Um, so like once I started normalizing myself, this tattoo just started scabbing over and wouldn't heal properly. And it took so long to get back in to go and get this finished. And then it finally was finished and just like all this just weight just came off of my shoulders and I don't remember if it was before or after I got the tattoo finished with the the third session like before the touch-up I don't know if it was before or after but I found Mothy around that time which was Sinatra's favorite toy and I was desperately trying to find him when we were deciding to put Sinatra to sleep and I could not find him for the life of me. So that was really emotional finding him around that time. Right now though, if you look at this tattoo, you will see that there is a lot of peeling, cracked skin a little bit. Um, this is all the areas that 
my tattoo artist went over for the touch up. Um, and like right there in part of that little frame, that's where the scarring was. She went over the scarring with the, um, the black and that was where it was scabbing up a lot in the second tattoo process mostly and it would not heal. My advice though would be if you're going to get a tattoo, if you only ever want one tattoo and you know for sure that's all you ever want, go ahead and get your big thing. Like go ahead and go for it. But if you are curious about tattoos and you do have some small ones in mind, I would suggest doing what I did and get something small, not super intricate, just to kind of test the waters and see. That way if you end up not liking tattoos, you can get it covered up easily or removed easily with laser removal. Which, I mean, it's not easy to get laser removal surgery done on tattoos, but at least it's not some big, giant back piece or something. And after you get this first tattoo, then you can decide if you want future ones or just get rid of the one you have currently. Um, but I will just say this, tattoos are like potato chips. When you get one, you're going to want more. Um, that's exactly what happened to me. As soon as this, I paid off the tattoo the first time around and was leaving... I was like, hell yes, I want to go do this again. So, I mean, it's not that bad in the sense that, like, even though it's super painful, you still want to go get another one. You're still willing to put yourself in that pain again for something this amazing. So, I do suggest, however, not watching videos of close-ups of the tattoo needles going into your skin. Because that might freak you out too bad to where you won't get the tattoo. I, did, I didn't watch any of those kinds of videos until after I got my first tattoo. Once you get your first tattoo, you're desensitized to that and you're going to be fine um, because you want to do your research and know what a tattoo process is like, but the close-up views of the tattoo needles going into the skin could probably just freak anyone out, really. <laughs> My first tattoo, I was really freaked out and wanted to puke, but... Now I go in and I'm completely fine. I can watch the needle entering my skin. I can watch the tattoo artist going on my skin. I can sit there in that pain and not feel like I'm going to throw up or faint or anything like that. Um, it is nerve wracking first time around for sure. It is painful. Um, it just, you know, like I said, depends on the location, your pain tolerance, stuff like that. Um, but just with the way I see it, your tattoo is a piece of art and sometimes it can be very sentimental to you. My first tattoo is only sentimental to me because it's my first tattoo. I have no other sentimental attachment towards it. My thigh, same thing. I love moths, but no real sentimental value. My Sinatra tattoo, that was my first super sentimental tattoo. Um, you know, people are always like, you have to get something that means to you. But if you want something just because it's beautiful or artistic or you love it, go for it. Okay. Um, the, the tattoo is worth it. You're having this piece of art on your body 24-7. It's, like, really cool. It's, you just, sorry, tattoos just are just really cool to me. They're kind of like an accessory piece, too, because there are so many times where, I'll wear a dress and I'll see my thigh tattoo and I'm like, hell yeah, looking good, you know, and sometimes I'll wear an outfit and I'm just like, I want to show off my tattoo today and I'll go do that. But there are other days where I completely forget I even have one and someone will come up to me and will be like, oh, can I see your tattoo, you know, on your arm? And I'm just like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, I don't have anything there. Or there are times where I'll be chilling and I'll see like the black ink out of the corner of my eye on my thigh and I'm just like, what the fuck? is that you know so it, it becomes a part of you and when I look at my high school photos and I see my shoulder or my thigh and I'm just like my tattoos aren't there like it's the craziest sensation to me because they're a part of me now so when I go back and look at these photos where I didn't have these tattoos it just feels so weird to me so you know I I think that tattoos are really cool uh, obviously you gotta do your research though because there are some tattoo artists out there that either are going to scam you, you know, or they're not going to use good tools or they're not going to be sanitized. Um, if you are freaked out about infections, I don't have any experience with any infections because I have not personally had any with tattoos um, and I've never gotten even close to one. 
I feel like with some infections for tattoos, you have to really just be like shoveling dirt on your tattoo or something. Like they are so easy to avoid if your tattoo artist is like clean, if they keep their station cleaned and everything, um, just the usual stuff. So you're going to be fine. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain how you find the right tattoo artist for you because you have to actually go meet them and do your research, see what kind of artwork they do, um, what they like to do. With my tattoo artist, she loves doing moths and stuff. So at least, you know, that's a really good thing to have in common with her. So uh, you just have to kind of, just, you'll just know um, which one you want to keep going to. I definitely want to get more tattoos done by other people as well so I can have a collection of different uh, art styles and different people working on my body. But I also definitely want to keep going to my current tattoo artist and just keep getting work done by her because she's really wonderful. Um, I am going to try to describe the pain of the tattoo and the aftermath process. So during the process, from what I have experienced, it feels like basically exactly what it is. Being stabbed over and over and over and over again with a very tiny, well, not a, but multiple tiny needles. And you feel so much pressure on your skin as it's like gliding across your skin in the lines. Um, it also feels like a burn at the same time, like your skin's burning a little bit. And when, and it kind of also like feels like a numbing sensation too, like you feel the line and then around the line that you're being drawn with, it's numb. And when you lift, when they lift the needle off of you, that is the most painful for me because then you feel that release of that pressure, but you can still feel that pulsing pain. Um, then... You know, like as it goes along, you just you feel it a little bit more hardcore, and in some areas you feel a little less. Um, in the aftermath, it feels like a sunburn. So if anyone touches it, it feels like that, that you know, that like initial reaction of like hitting a sunburn. Um, when the wind kind of hits it, it feels like that too. When you wash it, it feels very raw and open because. Tattoos are an open, like a wound. They're a wound on your body, so you have to take care of them and stuff with the proper treatments, the washing, and the care. So, um, it's, it's a combination pain of different things, and, you know, like I said multiple times in this video, depending on, depending on what your pain tolerance is, the location you're getting the tattoo done at, what it is, how detailed it is, how long the session is, how sensitive your skin is. It's all up to different things. Like you're going to have all kinds of variables that, def that determine how painful it's going to be. For my first tattoo with the lotion, I used the, the brand Cowboy Magic, which is a lotion that's really good for uh, like really tough skin, skin that's really damaged, um, and it has no scent, um, that no fragrance. Um, it's preferred that you do not use lotions with fragrances and soaps with fragrances as well. Um, back then I was just using some random brand soap. I don't even remember what I was using. But since Sinatra's tattoo, so my third tattoo, I've used the soft soap um, with the little fish on it. Um, it's a really good brand. The soap is unscented. It doesn't have any like dyes, obviously, because it's clear, like no weird coloring. Um, it, and it, it really helped with my healing processes since my second session with the Sinatra tattoo scabbed up really bad and had issues healing for a long time. And after I started using this on my third and fourth sessions, it's actually done really well. Um, this is the tattoo goo I was also using. I got this when I first got the first session done of Sinatra, so the line art. Uh, tattoo goo is a more expensive option. It's about like $14 to $15. Um, I got it from Walmart and it comes with four different things. Now, uh, I like some of the stuff that's in here, but 
Uh, I'll explain why I don't use a lot of this anymore. Um, the first thing in here is the deep cleansing soap. Um, so at first I was using this to wash my tattoo with and it was just not doing the trick. It's a very thick soap. It comes out really fast and goopy and kind of gross. Um, so I switched from using the tattoo goo to the soft soap, which is way better. The other product that's in here is the tattoo aftercare lotion. So this is the lotion that um, you would apply on the back. It says for new tattoos, you do it three to four times a day. And for older tattoos, you apply a thin layer as needed to rejuvenate the color of your tattoo. Now I was doing this twice a day with the Sinatra tattoo up until my tattoo artist adjusted to not use as much lotion with color tattoos in the healing process. Um, and that worked for me. I only used lotion when my skin was cracking or it looked like I needed some kind of lotion. Um, and I was using the cowboy magic again. Um, the third item that's in here is Tattoo Goo Renew. It's tattoo enhancing lotion with SPF 50 and it revives old tattoos and keeps tattoos vibrant. So you use this to kind of help with color tattoos like mine. It is advised that you do not put your tattoos in direct sunlight as much as possible when they are in the healing process. Um, and you do not go swimming in pools, don't have it under direct running water, um, you know, just basics. Um, with tattoos, uh, color is harder to be absorbed in the skin um, and to stay there. So when you have it exposed to the sunlight, it just, it can wreck them. It can pull that color out and fade them. So during the healing processes, which can last anywhere from two weeks to three weeks, and with my tattoo, there was a time where it didn't heal for a whole month because of the scabbing. Um, I try to avoid as much sunlight as possible, but if I have to go out in the sunlight, I will use the, the SPF Tattoo Goo one. Um, this one actually worked pretty great, but I've only used it three different occasions throughout the healing process of Sinatra's tattoo. So it's not like I used it a lot. And the fourth item from the Tattoo Goo box is this Tattoo Goo, um, kind of looks like a waxy thing. It's waxy. Um, and you, you just like, you know, get some of it and you put it over the tattoo. And on the sides it says, ideal for everyday skincare, won't clog pores, enhances colors on new and old tattoos. And yeah. So I've never used this though, as you can see. So I don't have any opinion on this product here. So overall with my experience with Tattoo Goo, um, I, I wouldn't really recommend it because I only use one product out of here now and when I was using this product and this it's probably it, it might not be the product's fault that my tattoo was not healing properly it could be a lot of things or it could be a combination of the product I was using the sensitivity of my arm the first I'm first getting uh, color for the very first time you know um, all kinds of things could have been at play here but I will just say this, since I stopped using Tattoo Goo as an actual aftercare regimen, like a daily one, and I've used Soft Soap and Cowboy Magic as my lotion on occasion, my tattoos have been healing just fine. They don't hurt. There's nothing wrong. Um, no scabbing, anything like that. Now, those are my personal experiences with tattoos. That does not mean that if you get a tattoo, you can't lotion it twice a day and that you have to use certain things like that is not what I'm saying. <laughs> what I'm saying is that was what was worked for me with my skin, with the tattoos I got in the locations I got them in. Um, everything's going to be different for each person. So yeah, that is my tattoo vlog. Uh, to keep them short in the future, every time I get a tattoo, I'll make another vlog um, and I'll vlog the entire process as I can. Um, so yeah, I really hope that this helped you decide on if you want to go get that tattoo you're thinking about or change your mind if you don't want the tattoo now or whatever it may be. If you have any other questions about tattoos, go ahead and let me know.